It's been 24 days since we last had men's lacrosse on Schellenberger Field, and the Hornets are 2-0, so I guarantee they're anxious to be back here. Guilford, the opponent today. My name is Sam Graham. On the mic with you for today's Division Three ODAC men's lacrosse game as we are finally into the April month of the calendar, and that means it is ODAC play. It's been a while since Lynchburg lost an ODAC game and an even longer while since they lost one at home in the regular season. They're going to look to keep that streak going today with, again, the visiting Quakers from down south. The lone team out of North Carolina are Guilford, and they come in a pretty hot start to the year, a turnaround year here under interim head coach Marty Kelly. They're out to a 6-5 and five start, 3-1 and one mark in the conference. They'd love to steal one on a beautiful Wednesday afternoon early evening here in the Hill City. We'll take a look at some numbers to note as we take a look at these two teams. Again, Lynchburg five and four coming into this one. Started out three and four, a rare moment below 500 for the Steve Kadelka led Hornets, but in the middle of a bounce back right now coming off the biggest win of the season. When you talk about resume, as the NCAA tournament gets ever closer with each passing day, that win over then number 10 Amherst in a neutral site uh, is certainly going to look good at the end of the year. Two teams that can both score the ball at a decent clip. Uh, Lynchburg a little bit better on the defensive side, and keep that in mind because the Hornets really unlock another level of this team when they're better on the defensive side. If they can limit their opponents under 10 goals, this is a deadly team. Uh, Lynchburg a little higher on the shot percentage and clear percentage on the rise. That's a big factor of a Coach Kadelka led team. That's back up over 80%. And I guarantee you the coaching staff for the Lynchburg Ball Club would like that to keep rolling upward. Finally, face off, something we're going to watch obviously right from the top of the broadcast, but all evening long. Two teams that are good at the X. Who's going to have the edge today? That might determine who gets out to a hotter start. We'll take a look at our two players to watch. First from the visiting Quakers of Guilford. There's a few to choose from, certainly on the offensive side. A couple of names to know that we'll run through as we get through everybody. But we're going to highlight Andrew Birch today, the midfielder out of Cary, North Carolina. He's coming off his best game of the season in a big win over Bridgewater. That was a game that was tied in the third quarter before Guilford pulled away to the tune of a 6-1 run to close that one out in the fourth and pick up Odak win number three on the other side for Lynchburg speaking of big games Riley Mitchell missed the first couple of the season he's back now and better with each passing day Riley Mitchell a season high five points in that big time win over Amherst finally let's run through who we're going to see between the posts on either side we'll start to my right and a name that you might want to know in the ODAC an emerging star in the goalkeeper position he's young still a sophomore out of Culver City California but Darius Savazi Abazi he was not the starter when this year got underway he is now and he's done a remarkable job early on opening face off mentioned we were going to track that a lot it's won by Atkins and this Guilford club, Atkins scoops up the ground ball. And he will jog off and let this Guilford offense take shape with the first possession of today's contest. It's going to be important that Guilford certainly prize these possessions early, but really all game long. Lynchburg team try to be good defensively on the clear, try to dominate possession as much as they can be. I spoke with Coach Kadelka earlier on this year. He said, you know, don't want the defense out there all game getting tired. Want to give those offense their looks early. Might get one here out on the fast break. Here come the Hornets first opportunity of the day. Trying to go coast to coast. Shot is off the mark wide from Lynchburg's Alex Blanchard getting the start today. Trying to turn a little defense into offense. There was Blanchard. Nonetheless, will be Lynchburg now setting up with its first offensive opportunity of the day. It's a turnover. Goes down on possession number one for Guilford. See if they're named that one an unforced or a caused turnover from Lynchburg. Sort of just rolled down along the carpet, and it was Lynchburg that out hustled, scooped up the ground ball, and got out on the run. Hornets team that probably like to force a few more giveaways than they currently are. That'll be something to watch today as well when you talk about that defensive side for this Lynchburg team. There's Mitchell, your player to watch. They're at the point of attack of this offense. Shot comes from Riley Hastings. Leaping after it was Finn Schmidt, official 
points to well, his left, all right, and it'll stay Lynchburg ball. Hornets 2-0 at home, 2-0 in the conference slate. Now, one of those was the administrative forfeiture over Farum as Schmidt's going to try the patented wraparound and cash in on it. Lynchburg's on the board first. The offense is humming along right on pace. Finn Schmidt opens the lid for Lynchburg. Finn Schmidt's older brother had a successful career here. Finn had a great freshman campaign. He's off and running here in year two for this Lynchburg team and starting to see his role expand a little bit really within this offense. Last season, several of these freshmen, Spencer Vandenberg, Riley Hastings, a couple of others were called on, maybe more than they even expected coming into the year just due to injuries here and there. That's part of the game. Got to have that next man up mentality, and those guys certainly rose to the occasion. I think you're really seeing the benefits pay off here in their second year in this system. After a battle at that face off, it's Lynchburg that scoops it up. Kyler Mahoney coming off a good game against Amherst. A couple of cause turnovers for him. Way to thread the needle there on the pass right into the middle of that midfield line. Liam Holman, the freshman, collects it. And a unique look. We might see a few today for Lynchburg. That second line midfield already in there, giving Mitchell, Wolf, and Rust a rest. Vandenberg, Hastings, and Schmidt still your attackers, but Holman is going to be flanked by his teammates 31 and 35, a Prandy, the freshman from Richmond. Colby Hogg, the other freshman from Waynesboro. It's going to be a giveaway this time, though, from Lynchburg. The long stick for Guilford will jog in and then slam on the brakes. Drew Sizemore, perhaps the biggest impact of any defender on this Guilford team. It's good for them to see him get some action early, but it's another turnover for a Guilford team. Still looking for their first shot. How about the kick save? Rebound, back up, back in, hit the turf. That's another goal for Lynchburg in unorthodox fashion. Steve Ulrichs, the long stick defender for this Lynchburg team, soars in, collects the rebound, and in one motion, fires it back into the back of the net. What a hectic sequence there to find goal number two if you're Lynchburg. Second fast break opportunity of the game for these Hornets, and for the second time, Guilford defense more specifically, Safavi Abazi and goals able to stop it. Didn't account for Ulrichs collecting that rebound in midair. There's another face-off win for Michael Kraus. Stable presence at the X. Now in his third year as the starter in that role for this Lynchburg team. The Fogo from way out of town. He is from... The West Coast, Oregon native is Kraus. Got his season off and rolling, a 21 of 28 performance. Season opening loss to Gettysburg and really hadn't slowed down since. Just one game that he's gone worse than 50% at the X. I think his coaching staff can be more than happy with that mark if that can continue throughout this year. There's Vandenberg playing in the middle of this midfield. Making a charge, making a play. Vandenberg, it's three different goal scorers for Lynchburg who has quickly gotten out to a 3-0 advantage. Guilford still looking for its first shot. They've had two possessions, but the Lynchburg defense has gone ahead, put the Ixnay to that, and turned it right into offense. An interesting set there is Vandenberg, the starting attackman for this team. He's right there in the middle of the midfield crew. Point of attack position, typically where you see Riley Mitchell. Just takes the charge, really pretty simple. Lane's cleared for him. Here's a violation at the X. That's one way to win him. Guilford takes this one, and they're going to try to quickly work on offense. See where they can find spots to exploit the Lynchburg D. Expect to see a decent bit of isolation for Guilford team, though, that might do well to work the ball around a bit today. Team that 70 unassisted goals already this season. 
So watch out for those isolation playmakers working around. There's Birch, your player to watch. Bashwin Fitch, really everybody on this Guilford offense can certainly heat up. They're probably still looking for that really that one go-to guy. How about Steve Ulrichs trying to make another play? He is going to cause the turnover, scooped up by his teammate. Off and running comes Lynchburg again. Stop, pop, left it a little bit short. I believe that was Luke Meadows again. Lynchburg out on the break. That's the third time we've seen that today, and Guilford and Coach Marty Kelly have seen enough. After that third fast break opportunity, they're going to regroup an early timeout from the visitors with Lynchburg up 3-0. My name is Davion Washington, Jr. I have the honor of serving as the student body president. I have five little siblings. I'm the oldest of you know six siblings, and they look up to me. I'm setting the tone. I get to develop myself, make myself a better individual, but also I'm helping future generations, not even my family, but just future generations in general. You know, I found my passion here. I found, you know, the love uh, for what I want to do. You know, I just really um, had an amazing time here. It's changed, like, my outlook on life. You don't have to be famous to change lives. You don't have to be on the big screen or whatever. I change lives now, and I hope to continue to do that. And just same way that the University of Lynchburg has changed my life for the better. There's the head man for this Lynchburg team, Steve Kadelka, in his 28th season as the head coach of this Hornets program. A little bit different look there from Coach K today, rocking the light blue in honor of this one love game. Still the crew neck rocking with it, but deviating from that traditional black one in favor of the blue for a good cause, one that we'll touch on a little more at the top of the second quarter. So far, all Hornets up 3-0, trying to tack on another one. A nice sliding save by the sophomore, Safavi Abaz. You've already seen him make a couple of nice plays. Scoreboard might not suggest it, but it's been this Guilford offense struggling to clear, struggling with turnovers. Riley Hastings more than happy to capitalize on another one. Lynchburg for the fourth time right out of the Guilford timeout, tacks on another, and you got to figure that last timeout was called mainly because of the turnover issues. Mentioned going into it three times already. Lynchburg had been on the break, now make it four, and the Quakers on that last attempt didn't even clear before turning it over. They might just need to slow down, ease some of those jitters. This is a team on a two-game win streak. Certainly anxious to come out here, give Lynchburg something to think about, but right now it's all Hornets up 4-0. Riley Frankel's in at the X, still battling against Atkins, for Guilford, Frankel his first win of the day. A nice game against Amherst. He's probably feeling pretty good after winning all three of his attempts in the fourth quarter of that one. Penalty comes down and a little embrace between your face-off men. We'll check the penalty, but we already know what it is. Stick in the back as Frankel hit the turf. It's going to go against Atkins, and we should have a man-up opportunity. Tough look there for the Fogo. For Guilford, Jax Atkins, graduate student out of Mechanicsville, Virginia. He heads to the box. Penalty comes down, should be a minute. And this is something Lynchburg wants to get a little bit better at, hovering right around 30% on the man up last year. You know, maybe it's not realistic to expect to be a top 10 team in the country every year at any given metric, but Lynchburg was one of the best on the man up last season. Now check that, it's just a 30 second penalty against Atkins. Feed inside, Lynchburg trying to work quickly right outside the crease, we check it, it's good. Lynchburg strikes again. Nine shots, five of them go down. Hornets narrowly miss the crease violation. What I believe was the second goal of the game from Riley Hastings. Will go to 24, and how about the Hornets? They only had 30 seconds to work with there, and they, didn't even come close to using all of it. I want to call it a dive, but 
Honestly speaking, might have just been a little trip up there from 2-4, leading a sister on this Lynchburg team. Call him the quarterback of the offense. Riley Hastings frequently takes up that spot behind the goal. Surveys the scene, dishes it out. It's him and Mitchell at those two heads of this offense. Two guys that Coach Kadelka trusts a lot. Here's Guilford still looking for that first shot. In their fourth offensive set of the day. They've worked quickly so far. Might need to slow that down a tad. Cutting to his right goes Seth Woods. Trying to navigate through traffic. His bounce shot bounces over the goal and over the head of Lynchburg's goalkeeper, who we yet to check in with, Tyler Hadley. He started to get things going as of late. 13 of 26 on the save count against Amherst. Makes his first one of the day today as Guilford gets its first shot. Now it's Lynchburg working quickly. Hastings striding into the four field. How about a new graphic on the scoreboard on that Tyler Hadley save? Looking good up there on the big screen. Hastings loses track of it. Turnover one for Lynchburg. Picking the pocket of him was Wyatt Dwyer. Another talented defenseman, returner. His fourth year with the program. Talk about guys that aren't from the area. Obviously, Guilford, and North Carolina, every other ODAC school in Commonwealth of Virginia. But Seattle, Washington is where Wyatt Dwyer hails from. It's a pretty long trek there. Might have been feeling right at home earlier today, though. Plenty of rain in the city of Seven Hills today. Tried to get in a run this morning. Should say I did get the run in. About 20 minutes in, got a nasty little surprise. It's okay. Shake it off, get in the work, and we're thankful that right now the rain is staying away. First men's lacrosse game we've had on this field in some time, nearly a month. Long road trip for Lynchburg, finally came to a close. Love Washington and Lee, a massive game, a code red game coming up this Saturday. Shot off the mark, Dirk Meinhart with the flow of the game, and he's out there rocking 27. Might remind a few Hornet fans of former 27 here, Kevin Rogers. Rogers playing in the PLL now. Awesome moment last season when the old Lynchburg team was able to Check out one of Rogers' games in the professional ranks. Now here's Lynchburg trying once again to turn defense into offense. The head count says four cause turnovers for the Hornets early on. We'll check that officially at the break. But the Lynchburg defense is clicking. Just one shot allowed for a while. It's up to three now for Guilford. Hornets still dominating time of possession. A little sloppy on the last several possessions, though. Another giveaway here for Lynchburg that's had three straight possessions in without a shot. Finally giving it up is Savavi Abazi. He's got three saves already today for Guilford. Adley's just seen one placed on frame. He saved it. The long stick was about to have a nice look at that one. Dwyer was eyeing one up and then had his pocket picked from behind by Kyler Mahoney. How about the two-game stretch for Mahoney? Sophomore from Pflugerville, Texas. Two cost turnovers last time out. He's got one today, and that was a big one. An opportunity was coming for Dwyer to line up. Pretty good crack at the goal there. Instead, Lynchburg's going to try to end this streak of turnovers. Place a shot, test. Safavi Abazi, they do sneak it by bottom left corner. Corner Cheddar, 5-5, five, five, Dylan Wolf. He checks in to the goal scoring column. Fifth different Hornet of the day. It was 3-0 when we had that timeout. Hornets have gone ahead, doubled that up. It's now a 6-0 advantage for Lynchburg, who's looking plenty comfortable to be back at home. Moving left to right and then shoots back to the left. A tough shot there from Wolf. Guy that came back for a fifth year this season. Quite a few that have done that for Lynchburg, made that decision. COVID year of eligibility, use it or lose it. But most not electing to go the 
graduate transfer route. So they've had a few success stories among those ranks as well. You got Chip Quinn doing good things over at Babson, staying in the D3 ranks. Patrick Moore, P. Moore as they called him, former All-American goalkeeper here, one of the best backups in the country to Tyler Hadley. Those two on, relatively speaking, a, a level playing field. He's now up at Johns Hopkins playing D1 ball, representing the 4-3-4 up north, Baltimore. Lynchburg nearly had another giveaway there, collected again. Reset 30 on the shot clock. Mitchell, he finds some space and sticking out, extending with that right boot again, does Safavi Abazi. He has been as advertised early on. Six have gotten by, but he's made four very nice saves. Guilford defense just got to keep him a little cleaner. That one from Hastings. He was looking for the first quarter. Hatrick gets off the mark. Starting six out there on offense right now for Lynchburg. Group that's played together quite a bit over the last two years. Only thing that's disturbed that at all has been injuries. Russ, toughest shot of the day, and he converts. All up in his grill was the Guilford defender, Eli Chambers. You can tell they read the scouting report. Jake Russ is dangerous. Two six-goal performances already this year. Be in his business. It did not matter. Jake Russ goes airborne for his first goal of the day. Lynchburg now a seven-piece in the first quarter. And it's been everything today, everything working. The face-off circles where it starts. Defense has arguably looked the best it has all season. Again, only the third game at home so far. They've been great on defense when they've played on this field. Another face-off win. This time it's Frankel. He and Krause sort of alternating right now. Frankel's got two wins already. Unorthodox shot is collected. Fifth save of the day for Safavi Abazi. That pass off the mark. That, that's going to be the speech after this first quarter. Still 2.50 to go in Q1. That's going to, got to figure that's the messaging from Marty Kelly, the interim head coach for these Quakers. Well, they can get out of this quarter. You got to just, Focus on the passing, the sound passing. And we know, you know they work a lot in isolation. Right now, that's really the only seemingly option that they've had. Lynchburg, they'll make you pay if they can. Certainly don't want to make it any easier with the unforced errors. Here's Birch. Three goals, three assists against Bridgewater. Led the way with six points. Guilford probing. Looking for a little bit of goodness shot. Near side off the mark. Stays with the Quakers, 44 on the shot clock. Near side off the pick. It's Cole Plaster. Check that. Gavin Brown. Making a run on it is Gabe Alvarez. His shot off the mark quickly collected Lynchburg. Blanchard clears. Blanchard surveying to his left, couldn't collect it. Would have been a good look at a shot. Lynchburg again trying to turn D into O. Henry Fowler was waiting for it, just misplayed his stick. Got to get back now, Dwyer and Savavi Abazi, the only two by the goal, but a pretty good job to collect themselves does Guilford. New group in on offense. Charlie Evans is out there. Henry Fowler still out there. Here, here comes Holman and Hogg. Freshmen haven't been called upon quite as much this year for Lynchburg, but they have still been ready when asked. That second line midfield is back in there. There's the shot. It was a zinger. Dead center cut. First goal today from Liam Holman. Hornets have done it in a variety of ways on the offensive side. Some have been easier than others. That one, right in motion, don't break stride. Low to high, upper corner. Top right 90 for the first goal today for Liam Holman as the sun almost out of our eyes. 
starting to creep down behind the trees and behind Westover Dormitory. Face-off win here for Guilford. They've tried to go fast. They've tried to go slow. No matter what, Lynchburg's been in their back pocket. They were a moment ago again. Parker Seeley was trying to force the giveaway. Nothing easy early on for Guilford. Lynchburg looking for its third straight win. Looking to improve to 23-0 in the all-time series with the Quakers. Center field goes Fitch. Looking at a shot. Gets off a decent look at one. Guilford's had two or three of these now that have been solid looks. They, they were completely shut out early on. You're getting the looks now, but you got to convert because you don't know how many you're going to get. Got to be efficient on the road. Double team comes quickly against Seth Woods. Woods the attackman from Hilton Head. Last shot of the first quarter is off the mark again, and that sort of encapsulates that first quarter. Tyler Hadley was tested just once. He stepped up and made the save. Hornets have eight, an eight-piece up early on. Guilford in town. Welcome to the Campus Recreational Department at the University of Lynchburg. We believe in a student-centered approach to recreation, making sure that all students have fun and engaging activities that promotes wellness, personal growth, and community building. Our team works to provide a variety of recreation opportunities for all our undergrad and graduate students. Let's take a look at the different areas of Campus Rec. Campus Recreation covers all outdoor recreation. Our team offers dozens of trips per semester, maintains recreation facilities on campus, and offers outdoor certificates and leadership training. Intramurals is open to all students who wants to play on a team. We have men's, women's, and co-ed leagues for each sport we offer. Those looking for next level competition can join club sports. These are student-led organizations with the support of campus recreation. You can join one of our established club sports or you can start your own with our support. Campus recreation offers an excellent amount. It's not every day that you see Lynchburg bring out the blue uniforms. In fact, typically just one time a year and that is for the One Love Foundation founded in honor of UVA student athlete Yearly Love, One Love, a national nonprofit that provides prevention education to young people. Talking about the importance of healthy relationships, empowering people to identify and avoid abuse. And don't forget to share why this game dedication is important to you and your team. We know everyone will be in a relationship at some point, whether that's with friends, with families, or with partners. But what we've realized is that most of us are not taught exactly how to have healthy relationships. One Love is trying to change that, helps people identify what unhealthy and potentially abusive relationships may look like, and help people practice healthy relationship behaviors in their own life. One Love believes everyone deserves a healthy relationship, and we hope you will join us in spreading their mission to your community. Visit joinonelove.org for more information. Again, that's joinonelove.org. Sun in that pivotal spot now, right in the crease between Westover Dorm and Freer House. But it's been all sunny things, especially on the offensive side for Lynchburg, really just as much so on the defensive side. They're up 8-0. It's been a change in goal. Andrew Miller, he's in there now for Lynchburg. Had seven saves in his last appearance. That was a win over Virginia Wesleyan. He's out there now to anchor this Lynchburg defense that, as we said, it been just about perfect early on, especially, say, the first about 10 minutes. Really not even giving Guilford any good looks at the goal. Quakers got a few shots up late, but it's a 13-5 advantage for Lynchburg and an 8-0 advantage on the big board. 
Ian McCarthy and Grant Voigt are in there for Lynchburg. Voigt, a guy that, I would say McCarthy as well. McCarthy, the one Hornet last year that appeared in every single game. Voigt as well. Two guys that gave a lot of depth for Lynchburg last year. Voigt even made a couple starts. Here's a good pass inside. McCarthy shot blocked, rebound, saved again. Big time play made by Safavi Abazi. He has been tested and tested often. Probably feels like midterms again for Savavi Abazi. He's risen to the occasion. Now on six times today, did not get there in time on that one. Goal number nine for Lynchburg. Give it to Brody Mason. Seen a few of the freshmen already for this Lynchburg team. Mason in his first offensive set of the day. Adds a little insult to injury, puts Lynchburg up not. Brody Mason, midfielder out of Durham, North Carolina. Trying to add his name to the list of star talent on this campus from Durham, NC. More specifically, from Jordan High School. I think on the baseball diamond, Ben Jones and Brandon Garcia, Elijah Davis on the basketball team. Maybe one that kind of got away there from Guilford situated right in the heart of North Carolina, Greensboro, in the triad area. Spot where lacrosse is still sort of growing as we speak. Obviously, the further north you go, the more prevalent it is, and you know, Maryland in particular, Pennsylvania. Lynchburg's created a bit of a hotbed right here in VA. That shot wide off the mark. Looked like Miller was the closest to it. Official agrees with me. I haven't had to reference the officials much early on today. Two teams that have gotten penalized at a decent clip. 44 minutes in penalty time racked up already this year for Guilford. And the Hornets are averaging more than their Quaker counterparts in terms of penalties per game. Just the one early on, and it was only 30 seconds with a hug quickly after. No animosity really early on from these teams. We'll see if there's any more frustration on the Guilford side, especially defensively as this game goes on. Lynchburg back on offense. Starters back out there for Lynchburg. Russ looking for goal number two. That bounce shot's gonna soar nearly over the back netting. Let's we'll just go ahead and call that the backstop for the rest of the year. Back netting's a little bit cumbersome. Riley Hastings, spin move. Would have been a highlight play, left it short. Might have ricocheted off the post. Possession continues for Lynchburg. Now with a little more urgency, 28 seconds on the clock. Hornets scored quickly on the 32nd man up opportunity for their 14th man up goal of the year. Spin, shot, blocked. Never even got to Savavi Abazi. Hornets run into one another. Can Guilford get out and transition? Good job getting back in front. Lynchburg midfield, and then another pass off the mark. Kept inbounds. Can Gavin Brown get to it? No. Penalty flag number two of the game flies out. Took until the 10:40 mark of the second quarter to see more yellow. Opportunity missed for Guilford. You've seen Lynchburg get out and transition a lot today. Guilford had an opportunity too right there, kind of on a silver platter. Two Lynchburg players running into one another. Looked like a good opportunity to get out and run. Instead, Lynchburg makes you pay. They make you pay again. Finn Schmidt running up the toll, his second of the evening. Guilford's been plagued by turnovers early on in this game and feels like Lynchburg's taking him to the woodshed on just about every single one. No margin for error. When you come on the road in most games, certainly not on this field, a spot where Lynchburg's got 70 wins since the beginning of the 2015 season. I believe it's 70 and 16 is the mark since that year. We, we marked that 2015 season. That was when Lynchburg went to the national title game, fell to Tufts in the best season in program history. Interesting enough, last year the first time that Lynchburg hosted the ODAC title game since that 2015 campaign. That was against Washington and Lee. And the last home loss for Lynchburg in recent memory as well. 
Hornets quickly off the faceoff win for Krause. Add on another one. They reached double figures and then tacked another one on about 20 seconds later, if that. It is all Lynchburg right now. Looks like Charlie Evans going to be credited with the most recent one. Evans had a hat trick to lead the way against Virginia Wesley in his first of the year. And you talk about depth. We already mentioned Voight and McCarthy. Evans, another guy that comes to mind. When you even get past this first and second line, you can find some talent even beyond that for Lynchburg. It is abundant on the offensive side. And Coach Kadelka said it feels this year more than any other year. If we're fully healthy on that side of the ball, which they are about as close as they've been in some time, really looking at both of the last two years, said he feels like that, that side of the field is going to take care of itself. You know, defense is where you might need to find some of that intentionality. They found that right now. Last time we got to see him on this field was against Denison. They had a quite a day in that one. Defense sort of stole the show, held a nationally ranked Denison team to four goals. Right now, goose egg for Guilford. Lynchburg again probing on offense. Finn Schmidt, two goals already today. Gabe Menchaca. A few more faces out there now. Caden Hinchy. Ball in stick. Shot. Saved. Made its way to a net. It was the wrong net. And then nice leaping collection made to keep this possession alive. Guilford trying to clear. That's been a bit troublesome early on. Still just seven shots for the Quakers, two in the quarter. Long stick ops for the bounce pass. Don't see that every day. Collected Guilford. Hounder. Jason Campbell loses the ball. Recollects. Landon Trail, the long stick who made the bounce pass. Tries to work it again over to Campbell. Hornets all over Campbell. Three blue shirts in the area. Another forced turnover. Hands on the head for Marty Kelly. No answers have been found so far. Lynchburg transition, gives back. Shot Seeley over the mark. Don't get too many opportunities. Coming from the defensive end, Parker Seeley's probably gonna wish he had that one back. Gotta look to exploit. Anytime as a defenseman, you have that chance to tack on a goal. See if he gets another look at it today. Rust Vandenberg on, starting six on offense for Lynchburg. There's Mitchell who missed the first about six games of the season. Off-season injury for him. They didn't want to rush him back, make sure he was ready to go. Coaching staff said they appreciated you know, everything he was able to do while he was injured. He's able to sort of help run practices. Obviously a graduate student. He's been around, knows the drill, leader of this team. They said he's obviously most valuable when he's on the field. Hastings splits three Guilford defenders for giving it up to Jake Rust with 20 on the board. Rust looking at the wrap, gives off center field. Save made again. Safavi Abazi all over this Lynchburg team. The big bright spot for the Guilford defense. I mean, this thing could be... About near 20 goals for Lynchburg if it weren't for him. He's made a couple saves you wouldn't necessarily expect him or count on him to make. That's the mark of a good goalie. Lynchburg again looking for the cut. This time it pays off. Safavi Abazi unable to track that one all the way through. It was near the crease. Goalie unable to make the mark. Official two hands in the air. Goal number 12 for Lynchburg. Spencer Vandenberg's on the board with his first goal of the day. Jake Russ picks up the helper. Russ leads the way for Lynchburg in goals and points. Vandenberg, a big time freshman campaign. Actually competed for the U.S. Junior National Team in the off season. Really awesome opportunity for him. And I think he greatly enjoyed and earned some hardware from it as well. Guilford wins the faceoff. 
Back out to it on offense. 12-0 is the hole. Andrew Miller, the new goalkeeper in for Lynchburg. Miller's gotten a couple looks early on this season. Posted a good mark as the new backup role for Lynchburg. As we mentioned, Patrick Moore made his way to Johns Hopkins. So now Miller is the first stand-in for Tyler Hadley. He comes in in the second quarter, so he may see may see all four goalies again. That's happened two times already this season. And once that all four made a save. Three of them made a save against Virginia Wesleyan. And the one who didn't was the starter. And Tyler Hadley equaled his jersey number in that category. Somebody's got to tell him he's, he's got to step it up a little bit. Shot is on the way and in. Snuck one by for the first time today, did Guilford. And it's our player to watch, Andrew Birch. Fresh off those six points in the win over Bridgewater. He's got one today and has Guilford on the board. Sneaks it through the outside hip for Miller, who tracked it well, was just a tad late to the party. Too much velocity on the shot. Birch has Guilford on the board. Goose egg gone, shutout gone. See how the Lynchburg defense responds, and we'll see if the Guilford offense can take any Momentum from that. It's Frankel back in at the X. He battles against Atkins. No winner so far. Trying to shove it out of there. It shoves into the Lynchburg attacking third where it is waited on, scooped up. Stick lost. Who wants it? Out of the scrum comes Guilford. Shot in the back. Yeah, flag's going to fly on that one. It's going to be a man-up opportunity for Guilford. We wondered if we'd have had any momentum. Well, this is the most the Quakers have had all day. Sort of losing your head there. We'll take a look at it again. Again, a scrum for the ball, but even in these moments, you got to kind of keep your head. Two big swipes at the ball, then the first pressure is applied from Morendon. Didn't catch the number on the shove in the back. That's what's going to get flagged. Looks like it was Darren Palma. Well, check that. No, it's not Palma either. Officials are still discussing. Looked like Palma was jogging his way into the box. Well, it looks like they may give it to number eight, Henry Morindon. They're going to hit him with the cross check. Now, he did apply the first pressure. I thought they would get the... Pushing the back, though. And I say Morindon went ahead, extended the arms, and put one firmly in the chest. So a minute, 60 seconds for Morindon in the box. Guilford just picked up its first goal of the day. Now it's best look to get another. First man up opportunity today for Guilford. Lynchburg has had one and scored. Can the Quakers answer? Both teams right around 30% on the season. In the emo. Quakers can afford to be a little more patient than Lynchburg was on their opportunity with the full minute to work. Pass inside, thought about it, thinks again. Couple pump fakes, back behind the goal and got too far out of position. Risky play as Andrew Miller leaves the goal to go collect it. Confident in his abilities. Red sweatpants don't impede his progress. He scoops it up. Lynchburg again on the break. Tell you what, you won't lose Miller in a crowd. Those red sweats, I need a pair of those. Freshman midfield line, group two jogs on. Nursing a 12-1 lead over the Quakers of Guilford. Hornets 22-0 in the all-time series. Well on pace right now to make it 23-0. Third and final freshman in the second midfield unit jogs on, Colby Hogg. Here we go. Hinchy puts his shoulder down, loses the ball, scooped up out of the scrum. Try again. Cola Brandy has it. Reset up top. Henry Fowler, spin move, another one. Tries to thread the needle inside. Guilford defense standing tall right now. Got some big dudes on this Guilford defense as well. None more so than Wyatt Dwyer. I mean, he, he stands out. And that'll be good. A Lynchburg team that's going to welcome in a lot of size in that Washington lead team in just three days' time. Get used to some of these bigger bodies 
that Guilford's throwing at you right now. Long feed off the mark, off the top part of the stick. Crown, if you will. Recollected by Guilford. Still sitting here on offense. About three minutes to go in quarter number two. If you're just joining us, Lynchburg got up. 12 zip before the answer came from Guilford. Eight of those goals came in the first quarter, but a hey, two goal run is a run. This time the goal for Guilford comes from Dirk Meinhart. The flow in tow. Guilford has back to back scores and might need a little conference here if you're Lynchburg. Defense is gonna have a quick conversation with Andrew Miller. Just Calm those nerves. Kind of set yourself again. Just try to snag that momentum back. But, hey, Guilford coming in. A few more good vibes than it had in the first quarter. And if the second ended right now, I think Guilford would feel a lot better about where it was at. They still got time to try to tack on some more. They did not score in the man-up opportunity. They gave it away on a turnover. Another hectic battle at midfield at the X. Initially won by Guilford, then taken away, scooped up by Dylan Schuster. Towards the ground ball for Lynchburg. Schuster, another graduate, fifth year, this Lynchburg team. They're a loaded weapon. A lot of leadership, a lot of talent, but a lot of things to be excited about in the years to come as well. Plenty of young bucks, as they say, on this roster as well. Chris passing right now for Lynchburg. Working to his right, Mitchell swings right. Hornets content to work it around, try to run some clock. 34 on the shot clock. Mitchell again to his right. Guilford's closing off that lane. As Mitchell tries to go to his dominant hand. Now 23 on the ticker. Trying to wrap again, that's cut off. Second time for Jake Rust, he hasn't found the shot there. Likes that doorstep. Trying to turn Henry Fowler, his stick jarred all which way in that. Taking away Wyatt Dwyer. He's been good on the defensive side all season and certainly today for Guilford as well. Those guys could make a push for an all ODAC type of guy. Really anchors things on defense for Guilford. So a little more of the pressure right now, you got to feel like, is on this Lynchburg defense. I know that sounds strange to say with a 10-goal advantage. Not even at halftime yet. But it's two straight goals for Guilford, and Lynchburg really hadn't gotten the looks it was getting early on. They're going to get hit with another penalty, and words being exchanged. Dom Zingo, he's going to take a trip to the box on the second penalty of the day, and then was having words with Andrew Birch afterwards. Zingo is most penalized player on this Lynchburg team. Do typically expect that to be a defensive player. To a certain extent on that last play, might have just gotten tripped up with Birch. Nevertheless, he's got to hit the box. Guilford wants a chance to talk things over. Quakers, back-to-back -back goals, a good look at another. There'll be a man up when we come back. Celebrate the soggy shoes and the slow starts. Celebrate the lessons learned along the way. These are the wins. Not the shiny nail-biting kind. These are the last a lifetime kind. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Well, we talked about Coach Kadelka on the Lynchburg sideline. We'll talk about the interim head coach for this Guilford squad, Marty Kelly. 
A 92 graduate of Nazareth, his first year in this role, obviously, at Guilford, taking over that interim tag. And has the Quakers out to a 6-5 and five start. Nothing to frown at early on. A lot of positives in the early going of this season for Guilford. Interesting enough, it's been back-to-back -back in every sense of the word early on for Guilford. They started with a loss, but since then, back-to-back -back wins, back-to-back -back losses, back-to-back -back wins, and, and two more losses, and you kind of get the picture. Right now on a two-game win streak, both of those in conference play, Randolph, and then a big road win at Bridgewater. Still on the man up is Guilford with 36 seconds to go. They have it pretty much the entirety of this first quarter, 29 on the shot clock, 30 on the game clock, about two seconds of separation there. No need to go fast. Wait and find the opportunity that presents itself. Three goals in a row for the Quakers. And it was Guilford that took the last time out, but Lynchburg might be feeling a little bit iffy on its sideline as well. Andrew Miller came in for the second quarter. He's let three get by. And you don't necessarily argue at the call. You don't want to risk anything happening to your starter in Hadley. It was a 12-0 lead for Lynchburg and just giving up now a three-goal spurt for this Guilford team. You don't want to let them heat up. Mentioned they come into this one pretty hot. Outscored their opponents by 22 over their last two affairs. Won two games in a row. They got one of the better goalies in the ODAC right now. An emerging star in Safavi Abazi who just picked up his ninth save. We'll see. Lynchburg with six. Will they work? Hornets looking for a buzzer beater. Voigt, far side, off the mark. They will not get it. 0.3 seconds, they say that's enough time for a catch and shoot in basketball, not so much for lacrosse. All the momentum, despite a nine-goal deficit, rests on the Guilford sideline. Might be a few things to talk over for Lynchburg at the break. Hornets up on the Quakers, 12-3. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person competing at a Division III level created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Want to have some outdoor adventures while getting a degree at the same time? At the University of Lynchburg, we have an on-campus zip line program. Plus, we offer adventure trips that cost less than a cup of coffee. And did I mention our beautiful scenery? We're a university for students looking for something more than just books. Welcome to your new adventure experience.
intended to be a physical therapist probably starting about halfway through college. I love the concept that exercise is medicine. You know, we're starting to discover that exercise really can remedy many of the things that we thought that only surgery or only drugs could remedy in the past. When the student comes here, it's because we believe in them, it's because we want them here, um, it's because we believe they'll be successful. The faculty here are, are devoted to their development, not only academically but also professionally. We're not so inundated with things that we don't have time to make students one of our highest priorities. We have your back. We're going we're gonna to help you through that. If you're willing to work, then we're willing to put the work into it and the effort to, to help you succeed. All right, my name is Joshua Carr. I am a senior. I am a theater major as well as a history minor. I love the arts, I love acting, I love entertaining. I live in Fifth Street, the historic black, uh, black neighborhood. The money came in, transfer, scholarship, all that. I, I appreciate that greatly. I pay my own tuition, I ain't got no help. I pay, I pay everything myself. I mean, I'm smart too. So they gave it like, you smart, here, <laughs> here, here. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that though. You come here to do a job. I came here to do a job. A student's job is to get that degree and make something of ourselves. We got everything for you. We got you a 24-hour library. You got a, you got a, these sorority fraternities. We, we, we got to shoot for you. Is you going to put it on? That's how University of Lynchburg is. Success is in the details. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like you learn it, know it, know better, do better. What I love is they allow us to speak. They allow, they allow, they want you, they, they want our voices to be heard. They, they want us to, to talk. They want us to bring up the discomfort. They respect our point of views. They respect Black Lives Matter. They respect the LGBT community. They respect those, you know what I'm saying? That's what I love about my school. They respect that and they allow us to showcase and voice our expressions. I love, I love the diversity here. I love, I love the different interests of people here. I can act, dance, sing, box, play football. I'm, I'm, I can do it all, you know what I'm saying? I can teach somebody that doesn't know what I know, and that person can teach me something that I don't know that they know. That's what you get here. You get diversity, you get different people with different knowledge coming together, sharing information and helping each other out. That's what I love. I love that's why I say people. I love the people here. College, think about it. If it's not for you, fall back. If it's for you, go further with it. And the University of Lynchburg will be that choice. It's gonna be right there. They're gonna, they're gonna shoot, make it, make the shoot. They're going to make, they're they going to do what they do. It's, it's up for you to put that shoe on. So that's what I say. At the break, 12-3, your score from Lynchburg, Virginia. The home team, the leaders right now, but all the momentum on the offensive side at least rests with Guilford. They scored the last three goals of that second quarter they'll i'm sure look to come out swinging in the second half we'll take a look at some of the numbers that emerged some of the twins from that first half that go beyond the scoreboard it was a 30 to 11 advantage for lynchburg in shots hornets did assist on five of their 12 goals just one of three for guilford a couple of things we really want to highlight the clear certainly big especially when you're on the road you got to give yourself as many chances as possible to set up opportunities on offense guilford was just four of nine lynchburg on the other hand 10 of 11 and you look at the turnovers guilford now they battled back they forced a few against lynchburg towards the end of that break that helped them set up some offensive looks and then translates to the scoreboard. It's pretty easy stuff when you break it down piece by piece. And then finally, in goal, uh, Safavi Abazi in goal for Guilford has really just been phenomenal in this game. I, Hornets have gotten uh, the best of him more often than not. They've, they've beaten him 12 times. He's won just eight. But some of the saves he's out there making have just been phenomenal. And Lynchburg, on a couple of occasions, have gotten really clear looks at the goal. He's going to have to keep it up. He's going to have to be great in the second half for an onslaught of goals that Lynchburg tacked on early. Riley Hastings scored a couple of them. Finn Schmidt, he had a pair as well. Other than that, nobody really got going 
individually. We'll take a look at some of those individual stats, take a look at some of our leaders from the first half. We'll start with the visitors uh, for Guilford. It was two goals for Birch, our player to watch, lone assist belonging to uh, Seth Woods, and then two points for Birch lead the way uh, for the Quakers. Mentioned the eight saves in goal, two cause turnovers from the senior leader, Wyatt Dwyer. He's been disruptive uh, for this Quakers team that has five cause giveaways in the first half. On the Lynchburg side of things, mentioned those first two multi-goal scores. Spencer Vandenberg snuck in a second one as well. He has a pair. Uh, only person with three points is Dylan Wolf. He's got a goal and has assisted on two. Ian McCarthy racked up two assists in relief as well. And then finally rounding it out for Lynchburg, how about Steve Ulrichs combining with Riley Frankel, the faceoff man. They've got four ground balls apiece. Darren Palma's got five. Split duties at the faceoff X, five of seven for Frankel, six of ten for Michael Krause. The one save belongs to Tyler Hadley, who was pulled after the first quarter. It's still Andrew Miller out there. For the beginning of half number two and quarter number three, Miller looking for his first save. He's let three get by. That's probably where it's going to start for Lynchburg, and he'll be tested early on. Guilford takes up offense first things first. They're keeping the good vibes rolling. The faceoff win to get this third quarter started. Beautiful sky above watching down on Schellenberger Field. It's going to get the most action it's gotten in quite some time this week, three games. Women's across play on Sunday against Randolph-Macon. Obviously the game you're watching right now, and then Washington and Lee comes to town for the men on Saturday. Arguably the most highly anticipated home game of the season for Lynchburg, probably going back to last year's ODAC title game on this field against those very same generals. WNL won that one. By one, 12 to 11. Hornets, I mean, bring up the ledger. The number of close drops they've had over the last few years. They've, they've snuck a couple out as well. Those one and two goal games. Did it against Amherst just the other day. Did it against St. John Fisher in the NCAA tournament last year. Did it on the road at WNL in overtime. But you look at some of those losses where Lynchburg's been right there both last year and this year. Lead in the fourth quarter against CNU a couple of weeks ago. That one slipped away. It's a very good captain's team, but one that Lynchburg knew it was certainly in position to win. In firm control right now, up nine. Put a stop to the first Guilford offensive set of the second half. Trying to find goal number 13, get this thing back out to double digits. Good passing, Spencer Vandenberg, a hat trick. Bounces it into the back of the net. Vandenberg the first to three, and the lead is back up to ten for Lynchburg. I believe that's going to be assist number three for Dylan Wolf. Hornets did well to work around the arc there. Sound passing once more from Lynchburg. Most of those giveaways, the caused ones that is, they haven't been picking off passes. It's been just really jarring the stick or the ball out, these offensive players for Lynchburg. Passing's been on point. Sixth assisted goal of the day for Lynchburg. Frankel back in there at the X. He and Kraus practically just alternating. There's one of those swipes that we were talking about. Nice work there from Atkins. He lost the face off. He stuck with it. That's what you get from those seasoned veterans. Atkins has been around. Jacks from Mechanicsville, Virginia. Fifth year in the program. Started this season 63% at the X. 115 to 182 is the clip he started at. Struggled a little bit recently, just 44% in the last three games, 33 of 75. And Lynchburg's gotten the best of him by a decent margin today. Went 8 of 27 at the X against Bridgewater last time out. So he's looking to get right again. He's made a couple of nice plays, though, away from the X today. As those Fogos, you only get so many opportunities to 
make an impact. Your impact is, is huge. You're setting up possessions for your team, but when you can stay out there, stay with the ball, force a turnover, kind of double up that impact. Lynchburg working with a 10-goal advantage on a two-game win streak, looking for its first three-game streak of the year. Swarming in to try and find goal number 14. Came another one of those fantastic freshmen, Colby Hogg. Lynchburg trying to stop Guilford from clearing sticks and bodies go flying. Lynchburg, a spin, Hastings, Looking at it, doesn't pull the trigger, backs out to the midfield. Sizing up his defender goes Liam Holman. Ops for his right, goes behind the goal. Colby Hogg, around the clock goes Lynchburg. Done well in one-on-one -on -one isolation looks today. They've also done well going to the bounce, hitting the turf on the goal. Goes Cole Aprandi, the freshman from Richmond. Bounces in another one for Lynchburg. The goal tally up to 14. And we thought that some of the momentum, the majority of it was with Guilford out of the break. They won that first faceoff since then. It has been all Hornets once more. They lead it by 11. Does Guilford have another punch in them? 10.48 to go, quarter number three. Happy you're joining us for the first time in a while if you're a men's lacrosse fan on LHSN. Last time was against Denison. Spring break hadn't even happened yet. It was a busy weekend of Lynchburg sports. It was two days after the track team won the men's DMR national championship. Then came back here and men's lacrosse took care of business and then some against Denison. They've won at home this year. They have won big. Blue Cabrini out in the home opener. After that, Denison wins. Split a pair of neutral site games at the Mustang Classic. Big time offensive output in those two games. A bit of a surprise loss to unranked Hamilton. You don't see those every day for this Lynchburg program. The other three losses have all been to ranked teams. Gettysburg, Salisbury, and CNU. Coach Kadoka got a say rare opportunity to face his alma mater in that season opener against Gettysburg. Hornets on the road for game number one. First time a couple of years that that's happened. First time in a couple of years that they've started 0 and 1. Hornets have rebounded, looking to get to six and four today. Soaring into the four field, taking the pass, making the play is Jake Rust. Assist to Finn Schmidt. And Lynchburg tacks on another tally of five. Put another diagonal slash in the ledger. Lynchburg up 15 to three. Second goal this evening for Jake Rust. He's been great on this field. Ten goals in two home games early on. Six against Cabrini. He's really gotten things going at times for Lynchburg. The beauty of it is, especially as Mitchell's gotten healthy, Dylan Wolf's really gotten things going this year. Spencer Vandenberg's come on as of late. Then you got throw Hastings and Schmidt in there as well. I mean, all six starters for Lynchburg on that side of the ball. They'll draw plays for all of them. All sort of have their own unique styles. They can all hurt you in a myriad of ways. It's a dangerous combination. A couple of teams have found that out early on. Lynchburg's hoping a couple more will find out down the stretch. Hard to believe we're already almost midway through the year. For Guilford, they are past that halfway point. This is game number 12 of 17 for the Quakers, a front-loaded schedule in the non-conference. Played seven home games to open the year. It's just their third road affairs. They're sort of the reverse Lynchburg here. Looking to make a little more noise in the ODAC this season. Feels like a deeper team than in years past. A decent amount of talent 
among the starters as well. Lynchburg reaches into its bag, pulls out Grant Voigt from the bench. He steps in and tallies on another one. Lynchburg on a 4-0 run coming out of halftime, snuffing out the 3-0 run from Guilford in style. Still distributing it around, still finding new goal scorers. That's the first of the day from number two. Grant Voigt's on the board. And credit to Voigt. Maybe he doesn't have quite that same role that he found last year when you look at some of the injuries Lynchburg dealt with. Still, every time his number's called, he's out there, he's ready to go. Gives Lynchburg a goal about midway through quarter number three. Drama at the faceoff. Guilford has it now. Will Lynchburg pressure? They will. Throwing a sort of a full court press, if you will. Throwing some traps at Guilford. <laughs> Certainly not afraid to be physical. Bringing three at times. Turnover forced again by Guilford. They had 14 at the half. They've already been worked into a couple in the second. Long shot. Went ahead and pulled the trigger on that one. Bit ambitious. Might not do that if you don't have a 16 to 3 lead. But why not there for Will Hicks? Big frame off the bench for Kadelka's squad. Guilford gets out of trouble. No, just one save, excuse me, for Safavi Abazi in the second half. There's the first save for Lynchburg, if you want to call it that. The first time that a ball has found its way into the stick of a Lynchburg goalie since the first quarter. We'll, we'll, we'll frame it that way. It's Chase Wesley in goal for Lynchburg. Apologies, not catching that when he came in. Chase Wesley is the third goalkeeper of the day for Lynchburg. Each one's had basically a quarter's worth of work. Miller went a little over that. Well, Miller did let those three goals get by. He did make some nice plays. Took off behind the goal at one point as leaping after it's Lynchburg. Hustle play awards the possession. That'll send the sideline into a frenzy. Not sure which diving Hornet awarded the possession if it was Dylan Schuster or Wesley from out of goal. And back to Miller. He, he did make a nice play behind the goal, scoop up a ground ball. Wesley in there in goal now. Smaller frame when you look at the rest of the Lynchburg goalkeepers. Miller, the tallest of them. Hadley, probably the, the biggest frame. Wesley, good with the stick. Saw that once already since he came in today. Lynchburg back on offense. Just about everybody on the field has scored at least one point. Play comes in from the sideline, and a friendly reminder, they have 30 seconds to work with. Will not matter. They turn it over. Reset to 80 on the shot clock for a Guilford team who'd just like to clear right now. Long pass, too high, out of reach, going back the other way. Hornets first on the hustle plays right now. Scooping up ground balls, leaping, diving efforts, and just keeping the pedal down on offense. Not letting off the gas. Hornets have reached 15 goals four times this year, three and one in those games. This is the fifth. You have probably a, a couple more losses than they would like to have had when reaching 15 goals when you look back at the last couple of years. Again, that offense really never never a doubt on the offensive side of the ball. You always kind of figure they'll spot you at least somewhere in the range of 10 to 12. And the defense, we've seen it. They, they can be flat out impressive. They'll badge you. They'll hound you. They'll be in your back pocket. Might just be finding that on a consistent basis that's the last piece to the puzzle. Guilford gets out of jail free. They'll look to now reset on offense. 13 goal deficit, the largest of the day for the Quakers. And the one love game here, this Lynchburg men's lacrosse team takes place in the middle of D3 week as well. 
Lots of fun things going on around campus all week long. This is the awareness day. Trying to get a good crowd out here to support. Obviously Lynchburg donning the blue jerseys, the one time you'll see them this year. Knocked off Randolph in this one love game last year. It was a dominant effort as well. Similar situation as well. As the shot comes off the mark, near side miss. Last year they played Randolph day before CNU came to town. Top 10 team in the captains. What a battle that was on this field. It'll be top 10, Washington and Lee. They're ranked number 10 in the country, latest USILA poll. They'll be the opponent on Saturday. No danger of Lynchburg looking ahead to that one as of right now. Another turnover force. I believe that's, that's Ian McCarthy playing on the defensive side of things. Hornets really starting to mix things up now. He is a midfielder, but typically for the offense. Gets back there, forces a turnover right there. Three minutes to go in quarter number three. Mentioned Guilford, an improved season so far, trying to move up the ODAC ranks. And arguably the best that the ODAC has been in recent memory right now. When you speak about men's lacrosse, Randolph Macon. Team that's improved from last year could certainly make some noise. Roanoke, Washington, Lee, and Lynchburg always typically found right there at the top. Hampton, Sydney as well. Those five teams, they've all at some point this year at least received votes for the USILA poll. As far as I remember, all five are right now as well. You get to see everybody. Lynchburg will get every single one of them. Guilford as well. They've already seen Washington and Lee. That's the one in the loss column for the Quakers in the conference slate. Henry Fowler and Lynchburg offense regroup. Aiden Olmstead's out there, rebound. Second goal off a rebound today. Off the doorstep, Henry Fowler is on the board. Lynchburg pouring it on 17 to three with 2.07 to go in the third quarter. A strong, healthy talking to at the half has put Lynchburg right back where it was in that first quarter. Hornets may be trending to a pretty healthy and wealthy offensive output in this one. Mentioned it's the fourth time they've gotten to 15 this year. Pretty successful when they do so. 18 is the most scored this year. That was against Cabrini. I don't have to check that. It's actually the sixth time this year Lynchburg has reached 15. Got to update the old notes. Count for that Amherst win, 15 to 13 mark for Lynchburg. I think that really got this program sort of rejuvenated again. At no point were they just getting blown out in every single game they've played this year. Obviously, when you're hanging right there around 500, no matter what the quality of team is you're playing, I think sometimes you just feel like you need to sort of pop one. I think that was the Amherst game for this Lynchburg team. A lot of energy coming off that game, a lot of energy throughout this week so far. Sort of a date that you circle in red on the calendar in three days from now. Obviously, the Final Four will be going on that night. I don't know if... NCAA has copyrighted that one too. I might not be allowed to say that. We'll get back to that point in a moment. Guilford strikes again. This time for the Quakers, Seth Woods gets on the board. Takes until 61 seconds left in the third quarter before they follow up the three goal burst they had at the end of the first half. See Birch there. Working in traffic, he'll get the assist. Again, these Lynchburg goalkeepers, when they've gotten beat, still tracking the ball well. They're not wildly off the mark, but there's a lot of timing aspect to it as well. We'll see if Guilford has another run in them like they did in that second quarter, if they can turn one goal into two into three. We'll 
See how much pressure they give in the backfield as well. Not too much. Some of that just due to the speed of this Lynchburg team. It's kind of hard to corral them, especially in the open space, unless you really want to throw some bodies back there and risk getting beat over the top, as they say. Closing moments of this third quarter. Hornets going to try to tack one more on. 11 seconds. The possession goes dry. Hornets working a little too apprehensively there. What can Guilford do with 10 seconds left? They were the last to score a goal for the second straight quarter, but it is a 13-goal advantage for Lynchburg, and that is where it will stay through three. Guilford will just dribble out the clock. We are through 45 minutes, three quarters complete. It is all Lynchburg in their return to Schellenberger Field. The blue jerseys bringing a little bit of good luck in early April. Be ready for anything, okay? Come on, let's go together. Together, let's go. Fourth quarter quickly underway for Lynchburg. They've gotten 17 goals from 12 different goal scorers, spreading the wealth on the offensive side. Has Lynchburg one hat trick today? It belongs to Spencer Vandenberg, leading point scorer for this Lynchburg team. Is still Dylan Wolf, one goal, three assists for a four-point tally for him. And then on the Guilford side of things. Andrew Birch leading the way, two goals, one assist, a grand total of three points to lead the way for the Quakers. Jax Atkins, it's been nine of 23 at the faceoff. He does have three cause turnovers, four ground balls. We're gonna check the penalty flag. It's gonna be against Lynchburg. They will send Looks like Will Hicks will take a knee in the box. It's another man up opportunity, the third of the game for Guilford. See if they can take advantage. They have done so once. They approve to two of three. Guilford scored three in a row to answer a 12-0 run to open the game. That made things a little interesting going into the half, and Lynchburg put any questions to rest in that third quarter, outscoring the Quakers 5-1. to one. And now on the doorstep of a new season high for goals, just one away. Hornets have made a lot of money 
in just the three games they have had at home early on this year. Scored 18 against Cabrini in a 13 goal win, then 13 against Denison in a nine goal win, and right now 17 with a 13 goal lead. Make that a 12 goal lead. Chase Wesley gets beat for the second time. And Guilford will tack on its second here to cut into this deficit. It's still 12, still certainly a very lofty hill to climb. But Guilford showing some fight, hanging in here early. Their lone other We check the goal score is Gavin Brown. Offensive weapon for this Guilford ball club. It's been profitable for them this year. Guilford team came in having won two straight. Continue that last point. Last game out against a ranked opponent. Only other one of this season was Washington and Lee. That was a, an 18 goal defeat for Guilford. So I think you, know, you go through the season, you look for benchmarks, you look for victories wherever you can find them. Only down 12 right now to this Lynchburg team, just ranked one spot below that WNL team at number 10. Guilford trying to battle out the rest of this clock. 13 minutes left on it. Take a minute a goal, roughly, for Guilford to climb back into this one. Lynchburg on offense right now. Again, eyeing up a new season high for goals. And pure domination at home so far this season. Hornets hoping that continues into the weekend. Hornets work it around, get everybody involved, burn the first 60 seconds of this shot clock. Now you set up the offense with a little more urgency. That ball goes high into the air. Now how quickly can Lynchburg work with 10? Shot is going to be blocked before it really went anywhere for Caden Hinchy. Three seconds on the small ticker, and it will tick all the way out. First shot clock violation of the day for either team goes against the hosting party. Hornets burn all those 80 seconds. Obviously, we're methodical early on. No need to hurry. You do want to burn that clock. You'd like to at least get a decent shot off. Hinchy was the only one. Had his shot blocked pretty much immediately. Here's a battle. Clear, successful for Guilford. They set up on offense. They've scored two straight. Not going to get a chance to tack on a third. Picked off and running. Maybe trying to go coast to coast. Hornets with numbers, inside pass off the mark. He was looking for Ethan Cotter. Pass misplaced. Lynchburg has misplayed a few of those opportunities in transition, and you're looking to nitpick things from this game. So I am sure that this coaching staff will, always looking for ways to get better. A lot of stuff in front of this Lynchburg team down the stretch. Always challenge themselves in the non-conference. You want to beef up that resume. I would say the Hornets did that, and I'd say those you know, blowout wins over Cabrini and Dennison, picking off Amherst away from home, hanging right in there with CNU, hanging in with Salisbury for really all but that third quarter. I'd say Lynchburg has is, is risen to the occasion early on this season. We'll check the timeout down below from Coach Kadelka and Lynchburg and be back in a moment on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Get your career in the game by enrolling in the University of Lynchburg MBA program with an emphasis in sport management. This program opens the doors to new possibilities for a variety of careers. From being an athletic director or working in athletic administration to working for professional organizations, your favorite team to running a local parks and rec department. And employers are increasingly requesting and preferring individuals who have postgraduate education specifically looking for an MBA. 
And so the University of Lynchburg Sport Management concentration in the MBA program sets you up for success and it sets you apart from the many other people looking for jobs in the industry. Learn from winners. Here you will learn from professors and mentors who have spent their careers doing exactly what you want to do. Increase your marketability in an $83 billion industry. If you have a 3.0 GPA, the GMAT is waived. There's no application fee, admissions occurs on a rolling basis, and our online program is ideal for working adults. All Hornets in the Hill City, a pretty sweet homecoming for the boys in baby blue tonight. Came into this one on a two game win streak. They're 10.45 away from making it three, improving to six and four. Setting up a highly anticipated matchup on this very field. Same start time, 7 p.m. Mention again, national semifinals, the men's basketball tournament will be going on at the same time, and you know, you gotta make a decision there if you're a student here at Lynchburg. I know where I'll be. Hope that you will join us, if not in person, right here on LHSN. Hornets calls coming out of that timeout to finish out this game strong. Well, right out of the timeout, looks like the message rings true. Lynchburg gets its 18th goal of the day. They get it from Aiden Olmstead, and that ties the season high for goals in a match. Aiden Olmstead's first of the day. He's the 13th different scorer for Lynchburg. Now, I'm not up on my season high in number of different goal scores. I think that has to have been eclipsed tonight. And Cabrini, obviously, the only time they reached this output, but Jake Rust had six of those goals all by himself. Face-off win. Quickly off and running for Lynchburg, trying to attack another one. And hitting himself a little bit after whiffing on that one, Brendan Olmert. Freshman attackman out of Manson, North Carolina, on the team. With his brother Tucker. The twins. Tucker playing in the midfield. Another big freshman class, another talented freshman class for Lynchburg. And you get to know those games, those names rather, as you go. You know, last year. It's more of a need-to-know basis. Those first years called into action. First things first, bright and early, cracking starting lineups, getting meaningful playing time, big time hit. Just didn't see it coming. Speaking of the Olmerts, that was Tucker who had his helmet knocked clean off. Nothing dirty about it. He just ran full force into the bigger Drew Sizemore. Heard Jadavian Clowney's back in the Carolinas. Let me see Guilford from North Carolina. I don't know. Maybe they switched out their number 33. Nonetheless, it'll be Guilford ball at the end of all of that. Big time hit applied from Drew Sizemore. Guilford does run a football looking formation. Looked like receivers running routes trying to pick up that clear. First effort didn't do it. Can they hustle down the loose ball on the end line? Yes. Now a battle for it. It's lost, scooped up off the carpet by Lynchburg. And the new, the final goalkeeper on the roster, Eric Allen. I don't think we'll see another one because they're out of bodies. Every goalie has played for Lynchburg today. A lot of physicality right now late in this game. Wondered if there'd be any, that frustration you see sometimes. As we got later into this game, that, that might be a, Good bit of it, 9.05 to go, and just not much doing for Guilford. Guilford awarded themselves possession again, promptly turned it back over. Lynchburg, another chance to probe offensively and break the ice on that tie with the Cabrini game. 24-5 was the decision. On April 23rd, the last time these two teams met. Relatively doubtful the Hornets lay a margin that big today. 
Nice save made by Safavi Abazi. Haven't called his name a ton in the second half. That's a good nod if you're a fan of the Lynchburg offense. Maybe not so much if you like Guilford defense. He had a big first half. Hasn't been perfect as they phase him in. Again, he was not the day one starter, but quickly assumed that role. He was the day two starter, if you will. And just a sophomore, he's carried that torch nicely. Culver City, California native. More contact. Hicks, full near runs over his opponent. Full fast break opportunity again. Ready for it and blocked. Incredible thing about Safavi Abazi, and at times it has gotten the better of him as he's blocking a lot of these shots with his foot, with his hand, with his butt of his stick. And they're impressive, certainly hard saves to make, but might want a few more to just go right there into the bread basket, corral it, and try to clear for your offense. Instead, Lynchburg can drain more clock, get another shot off. They'll test him again. Spin move near side, Cotter fires. Caught the net, wrong side of it. Ground ball scooped up. In goal, Safavi Abazi. Is that Carter Bez on his back? Carter Bez in the game for Lynchburg. First time we've seen him in a bit. A good sign for Lynchburg. Get him some playing time late in this game. The junior attackman from King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. Another big time hit. See if we can get another look on that one. Goalies hanging on to their flags. Lynchburg coaching staff doesn't necessarily agree. See if we can catch it. Our frame of view here. Scoop it up. Boom. Blindside hit. The guy that applied it took the blunt of the force, though. Lynchburg, 19 goals. New season high. The tiebreaker was big number 49, Nathan Miller. Saw his brother in here earlier. The pair of brothers. I already mentioned the Olmerts, the Millers out of Weddington, North Carolina. Nathan gets his first goal on Schellenberger Field. A big frame, right about the same height as his brother. He's fired up for the 19th goal of the day for Lynchburg. It's a 14 goal advantage. Ties the largest of the day with 6.23 to go. Trending towards this being the largest win of the season as well for Lynchburg. Right now that's the Cabrini game, 13 goals separated Lynchburg from the Cavaliers. Hornets looking for number 20. Have to go back a bit, go back to that Guilford game, in fact, to find the last time they reached that mark. Don't see that every day. Of course, they were on pace for 32 through the first quarter. Talked at length about Lynchburg's next matchup on the docket for Guilford there in the middle of a brutal stretch. Shots off the mark. Lynchburg again probing for number 20. Luke Brookman missed wide right. You see Lynchburg right now on the road. Then Randolph-Macon, another road test at Roanoke. Those are the three. That's the three-game span right now for Guilford. Misplayed that ball. Hustle play awarded to the Quakers. Lynchburg not applying a ton of pressure in the backfield at this juncture in the game, but plenty of it in the forefield. Sit back and whack. That's sort of the motto right now. Going to have a few bruises there for Birch. He's just got to bend over for a second. Getting walloped by a pair of Lynchburg defenders. Will Hicks. Patrick Marshall. Sort of kinging up on Birch there. Marshall, they say, that's a little too much there. He's going to take a seat in the box. Lynchburg will huddle up, try to nail down this man down defense. Fourth man up opportunity of the game for Guilford. One goal in the man up so far today. 
Take another look at the pressure applied. You just see Marshall, one, two, three, maybe four slaps at the side of Andrew Birch. Officials just said, yeah, we've seen enough. You know, got to take a quick seat. Man up goal number two. That gets the bench alive a little bit for Guilford. Everybody up on their feet. Goal scored for the Quakers by Colin Deese, number 34, a freshman attacker out of Mebane, North Carolina, hometown product. He slides that one in, a beauty of a goal in that bottom corner. Gets the best of the Lynchburg goalkeeper, Eric Allen. That brings it to 19 to six. Gets the deficit back down to 13. Hornets looking to hold another opponent under 10 if they can keep Guilford from putting four more on them over the final four and a half minutes, they'll do so. Be the fifth time they've done that this season. In fact, nearly every win they've held their opponent under 10 goals. The only one they didn't was last game out against Amherst. Amherst touting one of the better mascots really in all of collegiate athletics. Certainly in Division Three, the Mammoths. Prehistoric is Amherst. Lynchburg will clear once again and set up on offense. Really no resistance for the Guilford defense who's willing to just sit back and wait for Lynchburg to set up. Got to figure the Hornets just want to drain this clock a bit. Wyatt Dwyer still playing hard all over the back. Here comes the flag. It's going to be a seat for Dwyer. He's going to try to force a turnover first. We'll note that last penalty against Marshall was releasable, so he popped out after the goal or even numbers. But we won't be here in a moment, Wyatt Dwyer already jogging that way. See Dwyer just all over the back there. Got his hand caught in the cookie jar. He's working against Lynchburg's Brennan Ulmer. The young guy's getting some PT here late in this game, contributing as well. Something you got to harp on. I think a lot of people will just talk, you know, experience, experience. Well, you, at some point, too, you got to go out there and produce. I think that's what coaching staff is looking for in those young guys as the season goes on. Again, as we mentioned, you know, the opportunities may be a little more limited than they were a season ago. Zipper of a shot there from Brookman off the mark again. He's hugging that right side of the goal. Missed wide right twice now. Lynchburg will try again. That one, I heard something. Must have ricocheted off the post, stays with Lynchburg, and a reset. It did make contact. 60-second reset of the shot clock. Hornets can take it right down to about two minutes in this game. Go ahead and try to put the icing on top of the cake on win number six of this 2024 campaign. Hornet team that's won 15 games even each of the last two seasons. They've made 11 straight trips to the NCAA tournament last year all the way to the national quarterfinals. They feel like they have a team that can do it once again this year, maybe even get over that hump, take the next step. Got a preview of Philadelphia the other day against Amherst playing at UPenn Stadium, the national championship for Division III. So that one right on the doorstep is blocked. Another nice save by Safavi Abazi. Yeah, the Division III national championship game at Lincoln Financial Field, home of the Philadelphia Eagles. No Laura Porto tonight. Give her a shout out there. Big Eagles fan. So the Hornets got that taste for winning in PA. Against one of the better teams in the country. We'll see if they get another crack at it late in the season. Lynchburg has gone to the national title one time. Mentioned that earlier today. It was back in 2015. Nice save made by Eric Allen. 
He'll run some more time off, and Lynchburg can pretty much make this the last possession. 90 on the game clock, 72 on the shot clock. We'll see how aggressive they are if they look to get that 20th goal. I'd imagine you probably take one shot here late in the shot clock, and then you probably just go ahead and let it expire. We'll see. That's why they play the games, more specifically the possessions. That one nearly went out of bounds and now does. Some frustration as Lynchburg, there's your answer, will not get a shot off. At least not on that possession turnover against Ryan Hildebrand, freshman out of Rocky River, Ohio. Just got a little ahead of himself. Guilford will clear with less than a minute to go. It's been hard fought, strung those three goals together late in the first half, but Lynchburg just too much overpowering the Quakers on a gorgeous Wednesday night in Lynchburg. A little bit chilly still, trying to break the cold once and for all. There is goal number 20. Breaks the cold streak for Lynchburg on the shooting touch. The new number 34, Matt Crone, the freshman defender from Mount Airy, Maryland. He lifts the lid on the 20 count. 20 piece for Lynchburg. Matt Crone dials it up from right dead center. Thirty-four on defense. Good number for Lynchburg. Chip Quinn did wear it. Mentioned he's at Babson now. Playing good ball for the Beavers. Hornets win the face off. Might take a crack at 21. They get it. Back to back goals to close out the game. That one took no time. Too fast. We didn't even see the number. It's going to be number 39, Jack Ponzoni. How about another freshman? Face off specialist. Faux goal for Ponzoni. He will face off, get off, but not before notching one for the offense. Lynchburg has opened up a 21-6 advantage. 15 goals, the largest lead of the day. It's going to be the biggest win of the season for Lynchburg. And they'll have all the good vibes heading into a Saturday evening date with the Generals of Washington and Lee. One of the most heated rivalries in the ODAC will renew for the 39th meeting between foes. They've gone to a 19-19 split in the all-time series. Somebody's going to break the tie on Saturday. But for tonight, Lynchburg prevails over Guilford. Hornets improved to 6-4 and four on the year. Still perfect at 3-0 and oh in the ODAC slate, trying to protect that preseason number one spot in the coaches' poll. For Guilford, they will drop to 6-6, six 3-2 and six, three and two in ODAC play. Both those losses coming to ranked opponents in Lynchburg and Washington and Lee. Guilford fought hard, especially working into the halftime break, but on this particular night, Lynchburg just too much. Hornets overpowered the Quakers. My name is Sam Graham. We'll go ahead and get you out of here nice and early. It's been a pleasure. We hope to see you again on Saturday when the Generals come to town. Washington and Lee and Lynchburg set for a 7 p.m. faceoff just three days from now. We'll see you then.